Hey guys, it's Rec and this is the new Black Fathom Deeps. I need to make a video about this really quick because uh, we ran it earlier and I didn't realize they changed everything about it. So, really briefly, we're going to go over most of the changes that have occurred in this dungeon and also talk about something else that's currently a very large bug occurring at low levels. Um, I have an assistant named Relaine from the guild here and we are going to take this one step at a time yes so um, the starting differences in this dungeon a lot of the uh, mobs are now twilight oriented instead of just being random things I think earlier there were just like creatures and critters all over the place um, all the bosses have been redone as far as I can tell except for maybe two of them uh, but the mechanics seem about the same. I'm a little annoyed with some of the things they took out of this dungeon that were really cool, like... Uh, I'll give specific examples later, I guess. <laughs> but there are some new things that are kind of funny, like the executioner there throwing the prisoners into the water and having all the murlocs eat them. That was humorous. These new Merlock models are pretty cool. I'm not sure if they were already in the game or not. They look like Cataclysm models, for what it's worth. Eh, surely they're Cataclysm models. But, um, yeah, the the major thing I wanted to show off, though, was not even the dungeon. It's the current game-breaking bug, bug I referred to earlier, which is... Oh, what the heck? I didn't even notice this earlier. What's this? A rope! So you can actually get up here if you fall down. That's great. I didn't even didn't even think that was a thing. Awesome. I didn't notice that on my first playthrough. Um we'll, but I'll I'll show it off when we come across it. Also, it seems like a lot of the quests have been taken out of here. Uh on the new spin through here, I only managed to pick up two instead of the normal five but I had done this dungeon already on my shaman pre update right the day before the patch came out so I don't know if that's a thing or not I'm not gonna worry about the quests and more about the boss mechanics and that bug I keep referring to also this guy uh, Gamer Raw is new he uh, has a bunch of new abilities and one of them has the tendency to go a little crazy earlier we had Gamer Raw actually go flying through a wall and reset and that was hilarious if a bit annoying but also Gamer Raw apparently has a baby and we're going to murder the piss out of it because we're asshole people <laughs> we're jerks Alright, over here we have the Naga boss has been replaced by something else, something very different. And the, Na the Naga boss replacement is going to be where I show this bug off for the first time. I think we're going to experience it on several mobs in here, but it in particular, and it's pretty obvious what it is when we get to it. In short, all of the caster mobs haven't been balanced correctly with the item squish. So, they all one-shot tanks, <laughs> or two-shot them in my case, because I've just got so much health from heirlooms. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a friend that doesn't have heirloom gear tanking in here, so we can see exactly how fast it happens. And to demonstrate that my friend and the boss are the same level, um, she's level 28, and the boss is level 25. Yes. Um, and I'm not going to pull this thing because I want to actually survive against it for at least a little while. Eh. Pull. Yep. One hit did that much damage. Two hits, dead. The only way you can kill these bosses is by basically whacking it and waiting for it to do a cast or something and then running away from it while it's casting because the auto attacks hit for so much that it's just stupid eh, eh. come on <laughs> get her 
hit her in the face. She's probably gonna run back and start beating up people now. Oh no! No 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 Okay. Yeah, we're gonna have that problem on every single caster mob in here. So all of the caster mob bosses currently, the way the game were um is balanced, uh, you basically have to kite every single one of them until they actually do ca casting things. <laughs> uh, this goes for Stormwind Stockade as well. Stormwind Stockade, all the uh, fire elementals and shaman bosses, uh, or not bosses, sorry, all the, all the mobs that are casters auto attack for like t 2k a hit, and I have 3.6 health and our tank has 2.5 health so basically those mobs would one shot our tank and they're just random trash so it's a pretty big deal it's a pretty huge balancing issue but it's made these dungeons at least a little bit more fun to go through a little bit more interesting for uh, people I guess that are slightly experienced with the game um all of the changes to Black Fathom are kind of cool. I, mechanically, I don't think anything huge has happened. It's more just like story updates and stuff like that. Because obviously the story in here is 10 years old. And I suppose they wanted to bring it up to speed with what might actually be going on in Black Fathom Deeps these days. Uh... For your reference, I am playing a elemental. Sh no, God. I'm playing an enhancement shaman, and I am enjoying the heck out of it. Enhancement shamans have gotten a few changes as of the patch, as far as I can tell. We no longer have weapon imbues; it's completely passive. Like you might see wind fury proccing, that's not actually wind fury. I have nothing on my weapon. There's no like. Wind Fury or Flame Tongue Enchantment. Those are just passive effects you learn at level 30. So, it kind of stinks. You don't actually get Flame Tongue Weapon, technically, until level 30 now. But once you hit level 30, you start doing a ton more damage, and that was another caster mob two-shotting our tank, <laughs> as you could have seen. Oh, dear. This is pretty much a mess. I'm glad we have a paladin this time. Having a paladin is very useful with this whole one-shotting bug being a thing. <laughs> the green murloc hit her for uh, 1.3k damage a hit. And it was just a random trash bob. So we're gonna pick out that green murloc, the blue fin, I think. And we're just gonna blow it up. Yeah, it's the one doing poison novas, so it, it's another caster issue. We're gonna see these things called deep terrors, aspects of Ak Akumai, and Akumai is the new final boss. And all these tendrils are apparently different parts of this final boss, and this final boss is really, really, ma really massive, um, presumptuously. Sadly, our Marlock friend has been sacrificed to the old gods. You might see him on the table over there. I happen to like that Murloc. He's a friend. But hopefully this instance will go a lot easier now that I'm level 30. Because last time I did this, I didn't have Wind Fury Weapon and Flame Tongue, and now I do, so ha! In your face. Also, if I can find a piece of the random meat in here... Let me see if I can get something. Yeah, there's a little meat pile over here called a Murloc Slop Pile. And if you pick up the Murloc Slop, um, it gives you an ability that's one time used ca uh, called Murloc Slop. Toss Murloc Slop onto Twilight Hammer Cultists to turn them into an irresistible treat. And I will attempt to do that here shortly. If my friends keep up with me. I think they might have still been killing stuff and I just wandered off on my own. I am best teammate. Okay. We got two rogues over there. Rogues are casters in this dungeon. I think they've got casting abilities, so the thing applies to them. I can throw a slop at them. And just like that, they're eaten. Taken by tentacles. 
<laughs> and our friend figured the thing out too. Oh, I've got another one. That's awesome. All right. Maybe I can just keep doing this. Let me try to slop that big guy. Eat him. Hey, <laughs> that's awesome. I like that. That's funny. I'm sure if there's a heroic version of this instance, I'm not sure if there will be, but if there is, that might be a thing. Con trying to get your slop throws coordinated and have to move the through this hallway a little faster. I doubt there's a heroic version of this. I haven't heard of it. Oh man, my lightning shield's gone. Oh god! Holy crap! That vortex is doing a ton of damage. Ah! And that rogue apparently managed through a wall. Oh, no, there he is. Yep, these rogues are angry. These rogues are angry. Oh my god! <laughs> the entire instance is like this, basically. Anything that has any sort of casting ability. Just dead. No more fun for you. I like the new loading screens. <laughs> also, should be noticed, I just r r zoned back into the instance and it just teleported me really far in. Instead of making you run the whole distance, which is handy. Very appreciated. And as a side note, I'm very happy to report they increased the stacking size of copper ore and various other items up to 99. Very good quality of life change. Alright. Slop that guy. And... Boom. Oh no, never mind, we had two slops. Okay, good. Helpful. Alright. Another thing that they added was a lot of bosses. This dungeon has, I think, at least two more bosses in it now. Compared to what it had previously. In total, Black Fathom Deeps now has eight bosses. With three of them being completely optional. Um, the Naga, or... Domina, whatever uh, her name is now, was one of them. And then the other one, I think, was that old god guy, the faceless one. And then the last one is Nessie. As I lovingly call her, only it's not Nessie anymore. They changed that boss. So now it is something else. And I don't really get why they made this change, but... Eh. Seems to drop all the same loot and everything else. Can't imagine why they did that. As far as I could tell, it didn't have any other abilities. So, it's a little weird. We'll go ahead and show that off. We're getting close to it. They also added these um, aspect of the Guardian bubbles. So, you can swim faster through this one part. And there is the new Nessie, the Guardian of the Deep, which is a giant boring crab. That does Shattering Song. And as far as I can tell, he hits normally. His melee damage seems just fine. So technically, I guess that would be a caster, but nah. Probably not. It's probably just like a warrior type mob or something. I remember mobs used to have like types. And I'm thinking that might be playing into this. I hope I win that. Give me that bracer. Give me that bracer. Give me the bracer. Come on, I need the bracer. I'm using like a white bracer. It stinks. Give me the bracer. Come on. Crap, the chest is locked. Hey! People, come over here. The heck? Is everyone just ignoring me? Ah, oh, come on. Whatever. Nuts to you. Okay. Anyway, another new boss they added is this guy up here that we saw earlier named Executioner Gore. And I don't think he really does anything completely crazy or off the wall. He's another melee class boss. 
boss, so we won't have any issues with him one-shotting our tank. Hopefully. We do need to watch uh, that uh, Twilight Shadow Mage. Because that's a caster, and he'll probably hurt. I don't know why these guys have Void Walkers. Eh, stay out of that. That Vortex is no joke, it hurts. Eh. It also sucks on you, by the way, if you didn't notice. It sucks on you, does a lot of damage. That's what we like to call bad touch in the industry. Okay. So this guy does garage style smashes. Not very much damage to worry about. It goes down pretty easy considering most of us have heirloom items on. Or at least I do. Uh, and he reset. These mobs, like, tether so hard, <laughs> there's no option to fight it anywhere close to slightly outside of his arena. The other uh, boss we're coming up on, if you pull him back to the door, he'll reset really easily, too. So I guess we'll fight this guy again. Die, please. I'm hitting all the buttons. Eh. I'm liking how good our party is of getting out of that stuff. I'm really curious as to how much damage that actually does. Uh, the same stuff you dropped last time, yeah. Awesome. Someone else got those bracers I wanted. Who got those bracers? The healing druid got my agility bracers. Great. Thanks. Awesome. That's my favorite ever. Any int leather is automatically mine now. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll on all of it. I hate it when people do that. And roll on items that aren't their specialty. That's so BS. Rogue! Shadow Mage! Oh god. Interrupted. Interrupts. Oh god, giant vortex of death. Uh. Yep, he's dead. Not even close. I couldn't save him if I wanted to. Alright, let's res this guy. This boss is the biggest pain in the ass in this instance, by far. So what I'm gonna do... On this boss, is I'm gonna take point on it and drop a totem, and I'm just gonna kite it around the room. So, here we go. Drop my totem, poke him, and go. With an if. Ghost will form. I'm only slightly ahead of him if I can hold threat on him, which I normally can't. Oh my god! Crap! If he touches me, he'll pretty much instantly kill me. Okay. This phase, you can actually DPS him down. He doesn't do poop for damage while he's in his little restoration thing. Normally, I guess he would be killing all these water elementals to keep him from healing, but considering this is the only chance we have to do damage to him. I'm going to run away and continue to kite him or attempt to. Come on. Eh! Get back here, you bitch. I apparently can't cast Lightning Bolt and move anymore. Okay. More damage! Kill him! Oh my god! Eh! There we go. And that's the only way you can kill him, is by guiding the crap out of him and making sure he doesn't hit anyone. Because his auto attacks do, like, 2.3k or something. 
even on armor. It just doesn't even matter. It's ridiculous. All right. With that, we have one more boss left. I believe and this door should be opening. Do we got to click something? Apparently. By the way, that was the old gods talking. Literally, um, the old gods. I, I might zoom in on that in my log really quick. It's, uh, okay. I guess we've been conversed with the old gods now. Directly. They've gotten a lot less, uh, selective about who they bother. Okay. So, this is gonna look really crazy, but it's this boss. It's the boss from, um, Throne of Thunder. And it's pretty easy peasy as far as I could tell. It wasn't a big deal when we fought it. I guess it would be technically com technically classified as caster boss, but it doesn't seem very castering to me. We didn't have any trouble with it. So I'm gonna beat on it. His head's gonna spawn, I'm gonna ignore the head, and just get beaten on it. Because I've already got my flame shock on one thing, and I think my flame shock will spread to those other targets. Yes. It is doing that. Dead snake. And that's that. That's the instance. Some differences. Sort of differences, other things I haven't really noticed are super different. Um, the boss mechanics are different with bosses that are different, and um, they're sort of the same with bosses that are sort of the same. Um, not super crazy impressed with it, but um, the whole bug <laughs> might have altered my perception of this dungeon slightly. So when they worked it out with the patch, I think... It'll be better. Until then, we can just work around it by kiting bosses and being awesome. So, that was the new Black Feather of the Deeps. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.